previously on Outside Watch. Land ho! It doesn't matter what we see, it doesn't matter what we need, cause we're free, we're free, we're free. It doesn't matter what we do, it doesn't matter what we get into, cause it's you. It doesn't matter where we've been It doesn't matter how or when Just begin again, again It doesn't matter where we go It doesn't matter if it's fast or if it's slow Cause I know, I know Oh my gosh, there's so many birds here so we're not going to peck your eyeballs out. It's the most beautiful beach. Chris, I think this is the most beautiful place we've ever been. I am trying to sleep. I know that you are all that I wanted. So oh, oh, I this is the most rewarding part. When it finally cracks. Gosh. Oh my gosh! Oh yes! Mm, I don't want some coconut. <laughs> So we're just emailing buyout right now. So there's a cyclone forming on one of the models between here and Seychelles, and so we've asked for an extension, and I don't know exactly what they said because the message got cut off, but they mentioned something about our secondary destination to Tanzania, so it doesn't make a difference. But on the COVID declaration form, it said that they will not issue any extensions, but then the, the cycle only started to come into play when we were already on our way here, out of the Maldives, so... Our permit to anchor in Chagos was coming to an end. Unfortunately, a large low pressure system was starting to form along our route. Throughout this time, we were fortunate enough to be communicating with a weather router named Des Carson. So we're talking to Des, who's the weather router from South Africa. And he's giving us plots of this low pressure system. Des is a South African sailor who has been sailing across the Indian Ocean for decades. His weather knowledge and weather reading experience really helped us a lot in deciding what the best course of action was. Well, that doesn't look good. Nope. And then on Sunday, it's getting serious. Well, let's try calling up Time Bandit again and seeing what they think. Our neighbors on the boat Time Bandit were in the same situation. They too were trying to go to Seychelles and their permit was expiring shortly after ours. One seven. One seven. Yep, go ahead. Uh, we got an email from Des. He sent a whole bunch of coordinates and we just plotted it out and it's uh, the track that he's got is very different from that GFS model that you were just looking at on the right head. 
Right. Uh, I'm assuming he probably this just came through 30 minutes ago, so I'm assuming that you probably have the same email. But um, yeah, it shows it. He's showing it basically dead between here and uh, Seychelles, and then by let's see, by Sunday he thinks it's getting serious, and then it starts to track southwesterly on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But he's also saying that it's uh, the uncertainty is extremely high. This doesn't help your timing situation. Um, but tomorrow we'll paint a totally different picture. So get your ducks in a row ready for departure. The closer it got to the end of our permit, the more the system started to move to the east and actually take a turn direct towards Chagras, where we were at the time. Well, I keep seeing push back. Remember, I remember a forecast a while ago. Actually, I took screenshots. Let's see. Yeah. It'll supposed to be today. Or sorry, tomorrow. Right. Thirteenth. This when did I screenshot this? On Monday. Yeah, so now it's just nothing like that. It looks horrible. So it's very different. But the point is it did show it spinning up more on our route, right? But it's trending and downwards. They've pushed it more east to mm -hmm. the east. Which is not, which according to Des is not normal. Normally they do form more down here. These are RTSs. But then if we don't go now, and we wait, <laughs> we're now we're already at the 20th, and we're just, we've got nothing but headwinds. One seven. That's it. Hey. Hey. I just got an email from the desk. Uh, did you read it? No, I haven't seen it. Okay, I'll read it to you. The 0300 UTC grip shows a totally different pattern and shows the disturbance moving down through Chagos from the north northeast. It shows it getting to you on May 18th and then passes in a southwest direction to the west of Chagos and then continues further south. These predictions still have a massive uncertainty factor and the best I can guarantee you is in the next two to three days. You have a thousand nautical miles to Victoria bearing 272, and with the current forecast, you should have southeast 15 to 20. So for the next four days, average speed is six knots over ground. You could be plus or minus 500 nautical miles west of Chagos when the RTS starts developing southeast of Gan and north of Chagos on the 17th. With the extension, you could sit it out, but if all materializes, you're sitting ducks in a dubious anchorage. Tough call, but I would be inclined to be mobile. Skipper's call. Regards and keep me posted. Over. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling you know, if it's there, we'll be going underneath it and hopefully pass it as it is making its way uh, east. Over. Yeah, it, it sounds like uh, his forecasts are agreeing now with uh, the GFS, so I'm thinking we go. We go, yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's go. All right. Well, we're going. We're gonna outrun the storm. Otherwise, we're sitting ducks if we stay here. So we're going to Seychelles. We're going. Let's get this anchor up. Uh, we uh, need you to motor forward a bit. Okay. Out on the snubber. Okay. okay. Bye, Chagos. This is fantastic. 8.6, 8.7, saw 9 a few times. Time bandits well ahead of us, but they're catamaran. Happy Chris? So, the weather is now looking good for our trip. The low pressure is well behind us. Should be okay. Yeah, if we would have stayed in Chagos, and that, which we did end up getting our extension, five days, but then on Monday, it shows that thing actually hitting like a direct hit on Chagos. There's not that many places to hide out there that are that great, so I figured we might as well get going and get away from it. Yes. 
So keep this, keep this speed up to get a fast passage. Yeah, it's it's showing like five days. It's not bad. Surrounded by squalls and the swell is pretty massive. Thanks for we're going pretty fast though, seven point eight knots over the ground, so that's good. We're day two now. En route to the Seychelles. I don't wanna jinx it, but right now we're sailing pretty much dead downwind and we're doing really well. And the sails are full in about six knots. At this rate we should be there by Tuesday, which is gonna make it Roughly a six day passage. Hi there. Hi. Did you shower? Yeah, you can't tell. His hair is looking a little bit more fluffy now. Day three, finally showered. I shower every day. It's so nice. We have a 900 liter water tank and there's two of us. Yeah, but it's difficult to take a shower and uh, all the swell. Yeah, I feel like lean up against the wall. Motor's running, as you can hear trying to out, well actually we're not trying to outrun that system anymore, we're just trying to, it's going to stay well south of us, so it looks like just trying to get to Seychelles before we had the possibility to encounter headwinds because of that rotation of the storm. We might catch the northwest corner of it, which might make some unpleasant winds, unless we arrive there by Tuesday or early Wednesday, we should be golden. But we need to go fast for like 24 hours make up some lost, lost time. Going slow last night. There's not much left of that flag. You can't even see which country it is. Hey, maybe we don't even need to bother taking it down, so it'll just disintegrate off the line. Our Genoa furler belt broke, so Chris is up on the bow fixing that now. It's pretty crummy timing, it's pretty rough. Hopefully that gets sorted soon. Storms around, so we want to make sure that it's sorted because we need a reef. She broke last night in the dark around four in the morning and we waited till it was light to go up there so it's safer and we actually had some pretty good speeds. We've been going seven, eight knots. So hopefully when Chris comes back, it's all fixed and we have some good news. Okay, so Chris just signaled to me. He got the cover off. So now we can change the belt. Good. This was the belt inside the furling motor that obviously failed. But it's working now. Do we have extras? We have we have one more belt. One more belt, okay. One more. I don't know what I'm doing wrong because I just put it in. I don't know. What was that? It was six, right six, as we left Thailand for the passage. Six months ago. But, but we got the use out of it. Should last longer. Camera won't ever do it justice, but it is really gnarly. Still going seven knots, and we just got a little sliver of Genoa out. Shift, studying the feel. 
is really tired. Well, um, it's been a bit of a wild ride at times. It's pretty, pretty good right now. It's uh, day, I'm losing track of the days now. Five. No, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. No, it's starting day six. So close. It's so exciting. Land ho! Land ho! Coordinates for the exact spot uh, location of the anchorage. Just the one place. Okay. I speak good English here. Yeah. Uh, you ready? Go ahead. Uh, it's zero four degrees three seven. This about one one minute south. Zero five five degrees two eight. This about five zero minute east. Okay, I got the zero four degrees thirty seven decimal one one south and fifty five degrees uh, twenty eight decimal five zero east. Over. It's okay with advice, health officer, that will be arriving in uh, one hour and twenty minutes. Thank you, sir. Stand by one two, and uh, you are welcome before the trip. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be standing by in one six. The thing's destroyed. the COVID kind though, just the regular type of quarantine. Yacht quarantine. Yacht quarantine for probably like an hour. Like short quarantine? Yeah. So we had an engine failure. Wow. Sort of, we shut it down. It's making a terrible sound. I don't know, transmission fluid's really milky. It's like non-existent. So that's, it's like leaked out all the transmission fluid through the raw water system. Okay. Should be good now. Hope it runs okay. I think it'll be fine now. There was no fluid in there, which is why it was making that awful fucking sound. Okay, I guess we shut it down pretty quickly. So it shouldn't be any lasting damage, but we'll go into the marina. Or at least, uh, yeah, I don't think it's urgent, actually. Oh, really? I think it's gonna be okay. Okay. We just need to flush it multiple times with good ATF, and then I need to order that Part. cooler. Yep, I should have done that a long time ago. Fire it up. Fire it up? Okay. So 
it okay? It sounds better for now, yeah. Oh, not after a long passage. 17 days at sea and then this crap. An engine fails on the way in. It's like Martin and Sagarani. Hey, we all have something in common now. They, they had an engine failure in Tamale. But good news is, I think ours is fixed. Okay. For now, it's not very fixed. Good. It'll get us around. Good. So there's a, there's a heat exchanger where the, the seawater flows through. And in that exchanger, the uh, ATF, the transmission fluid, circulates through that exchanger to cool it. And I think that that exchanger is leaking. It must have corrosion on the inside, so it's leaked in a little bit of salt water into the transmission. But even worse, now it, it leaked all of our fluid out, pretty much. So this is supposed to be two liters, so and we've got what yes. is that? Like an eighth of a liter? Yes. No, or I would say quarter, eight. Quarter? This is a six-liter jug, so it's three liters. This is like two liters. So okay, yes, so it's not much. Half a liter. Maybe. It's not much. It's really that's really bad. Um, but you don't think it's there's no permanent damage, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think we ran it long enough to do any permanent damage. We shut it down as soon as we heard Both noise. Time, every time we had heard the bad sounds, we shut it down immediately. So Ooh. Well, I, I think it's uh, it sounds good now. Okay. I'm, I'm just happy we found the problem at least. But this is the worst, worst time. On our way to the quarantine anchorage. It. You made it! Yay! <laughs> it's a good feeling. I know, it's so good. I'm glad our engine got us to the Let me call. Bridge. Let me call for control somewhere. Okay. Let's not help, to help people. Mm -hmm. Victoria Port Control, Victoria Port Control. This is sailing vessel Skylark. Skylark, over. Uh, uh, hi, good morning again. Uh, sorry for the delay. We are now uh, safely anchored in the quarantine anchorage and we'll be standing by for the health officials over. You took a one for the anchor, please. What? What did he say? Uh, can you say again? You took a one copy of the thank you. Oh, well, copied. Okay, thank you. We'll be standing by at 1 6. Quarantine boats just left. Stations! We made it! Are you to the quarantine anchorage we're finished with that but now it looks like some of the fluids already left after so, just like three miles yes but luckily the, the marina is right there just, we'll check it again when we get to the anchorage and see what it's at but like that really is that's like catastrophic mm -hmm. but it sounded fine on the way over here so after determining that our transmission oil cooler was completely destroyed, we decided that it'd be best to get ourselves into the marina as quickly as possible and make the necessary repairs. Thankfully, they had our spot available for us and we went into the marina immediately upon arriving in the Seychelles. Okay, we're here. We made it to the marina. Are you going to step off? 24 hours ago, we're in the middle of the Indian Ocean. Now we're tied up to a dock. And the first time on land. Well, sort of land. <sighs> Next time on Outside Watch, we finally get to go and explore the Seychelles. <laughs>